Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Welcome to the Bible broadcast with preacher, teacher, and missionary Perry Demopoulos. The Bible broadcast is a ministry for the purpose that the lost might be saved, that the saved may be edified, and that the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, would be glorified. We hope that the Lord will bless you with today's message. Join in with us now and let's hear today's broadcast. The subject we're going to take up today has to do with modern day judgments of God. Although they're not only modern day, this is the way which God has been judging the world since man fell in the garden. And before we start, we want to say that this is going to be a two-part series on this subject. We're not going to be discussing the seven main judgments line, uh, laid out in the Bible, such as the judgment on sin at Calvary by the Lord Jesus Christ, and the believer's judgment, a daily judgment, and also the judgment upon Satan, or the judgment seat of Christ for believers in Christ, or the judgment of the nation Israel, or the judgment of nations, or the great white throne judgment. What we're going to take up here has to do with how God has been judging man and sin to this very day, to the year 2020. And for that, first of all, we want to find out the reason why. Well, of course, the reason is sin, but we want to get man's attitude toward God and what brings on the judgment of God. And for that, you all know about the judgment of the flood of Noah. Well, what was the reason why the flood was brought on? Our text is Job chapter 21 and verses 12 through 15. Job 21, 12 through 15, we read, They take the timbrel and harp, and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Now do you see that? Everything is absolutely negative toward the God that put the breath in their own lungs. And in the following chapter, chapter 22, we read from verses 15 to 17. Job 22, 15. Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown, watch it, with a flood, which said unto God, now here's the hard attitude, depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Do you see that? They think that God can't do anything for them. They think they can make it without the God of the Bible and the God that created the heaven and the earth. And we are most certainly not talking about Allah or Buddha or Confucius. We're talking about the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was sent to this earth as a man and died and shed God's pure, precious blood for wicked man. For we read in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So there we have it. That's the reason why the judgments come. Now, why would a man have such a uh, wicked imagination like that and challenge God by saying, Have God depart from us. We don't, have, we don't want anything to do with him. Well, that is explained in Romans chapter 3, verse 18. There is no fear of God before their eyes. When you don't have the fear of God, you challenge God, and that's the last thing you ever want to do is challenge the one who's put the breath in your lungs. Then the question comes up, who is the one that would take that fear of God out of man's heart? Well, if you read in Job chapter 41, verse 34, dealing with Satan called Leviathan, it says in the very last verse of chapter 41, that's Job 41, 34, he, that is Leviathan, Satan, 
beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Now there you have it. It's pride that causes a man not to fear God. It's Satan that challenged God and said, I want to be like the most high and sin loves company. The devil wants company. And there you have people being deceived by the devil by perverting the words of God. And there were off to the races and a downhill slope right into hell of people that do not want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Thus, a whole history up to October of 2020 of a record of the judgment of God upon people, and not only upon people, but against his own creation that is now perverted. So in the end, there'll be a new heavens and a new earth. But until then, judgment, and that is to get people to fear God and that they would receive and look to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. But we're going to start with Genesis 1-2, where after Genesis 1-1, where God created the heaven and the earth, we read in verse 2, And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, watch it, waters. So although there were no, any, there were no people there, there were fallen angels, sons of God, and now Satan, or Lucifer, and God judged the creation with water. So we're going to start with God's judgments by water. Now, dealing with the flood of Noah, which was 1,500 to 700 years later, which is a different flood because of a flood where the whole civilization was drowned by water except eight people. Now, can you imagine that? where there were people all around this earth and they were all drowned by water. Who sent the water? God himself. He wiped man off the face of the earth with a flood. And we just read about that in Genesis 6. Do you think God has changed it all? No. Well, you read about China. 1935, 145,000 people died because of a flood. In 1975, the typhoon Nina killed 229,000, or should we correctly say God sending the typhoon, creating the typhoon, and God killing 229,000. In 1938, in China, again, 800,000 people are killed by the typhoon. In 1887, about 2 million people die. Where? China. Why? Well, what do you think they worship? God Almighty there? No, you got a bunch of pagan idolaters there. Idolatry means war against the God of the Bible. In 1931, uh, about 4 million people die because of a flood that God sent. Why? Because God judges sin. China is the country, by the way, where there have been more people that have been killed by floods than any other country. Don't you think God is trying to tell them to wake up? We could go on and on and on about the floods that God himself created that would drown people out and kill them. Now we've got to move on. Let's go to the judgments of God by high winds. Well, you've got what is called hurricanes today and tornadoes, but those are just synonyms uh, to the words that are used in the Bible, like whirlwinds, strong winds, blasts. You can read about that in, in Genesis 41, 23. And behold, seven ears were withered thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. Do you see that? And people say, we had a blast. Well, you might think that's a good time, but when God blasts, look out. You're talking about holy terror destruction by God Almighty himself. For we read in Job 4, 9, by the blast of God, they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. And of course, people try to delete God from the conversation when we talk about the reason why high winds come around. Well, they will never mention God. They'll call those high winds hurricanes and tornadoes and use different terminology other than biblical terminology. 
Now, just to give you an idea how the weathermen give you a prognosis or explain the reason for high winds. Now, listen to this. The three main components critical to the formation of a hurricane are warm water, moist, warm air, and light upper winds. A hurricane begins when large masses of warm water and moist, warm air come in contact with cooler air. This collision prompts the warm water vapor to cool down very fast and condense, eventually forming dense storm clouds and emptying out as heavy rain. During the condensation process, latent heat is emitted. This latent heat warms the cold air above, causing it to rise and pave the way for warmer and more humid air coming up from below, causing a cycle. As the process continues, more warm air is attracted to the mounting storm and more heat is moved from the ocean's surface to the atmosphere. The constant heat exchange leads to a development in wind patterns that spin around a relatively calm center similar to water spinning down a drain. If the conditions remain the same, meaning that there is enough fuel for the storm to continue developing, the rotating storm becomes even more powerful, eventually becoming a hurricane. As a hurricane continues to strengthen, an opening at the center known as the eye will form. Now, one word about God Almighty. Now, here's the prophet Hosea, what he says about it. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stock. The bud shall yield no meal. If so, be it yield, the strangers shall swallow it up. There you have it. Now, when uh, the highest veloc wind velocity took place in Australia in 1996, over 400 kilometers per hour. Now, that would come out to, I don't know, 200 and some miles per hour, something like that. The counterattack of the weathermen that want to boost, kick God out of their terminology well, they are the hypocrites that talk about the weather. And Jesus Christ had some words about them. In Luke chapter 12, verses 54 through 56, he says this, And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? In Matthew 16, verses 3 and 4, we read, And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. That's what the hypocrites say. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them, and he departed. Now, who in the end is behind all these winds? Well, the psalmist said in Psalm 135, verses 6 and 7, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas and all deep places. He, caught, he, he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, he maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. The psalmist said in Psalm 83, verse 15, So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. With thy storm. Did you get that? Nahum the prophet also said, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord is hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Jeremiah the prophet said, when he, in Jeremiah 10, 13, we read, when he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Psalm 89, verse 9. Thou rulest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Do you see that? The psalmist said in Psalm 148, verses 7 and 8, Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor. 
stormy wind fulfilling his word. Now, in all these verses, we read often the word vapor. That's the very same word that your weathermen speak about. We already read that in their version of a hurricane. They say this collision prompts the warm water vapor to cool down. And they don't even know it. the word vapor is right in the Holy Bible and is given by God himself that creates the storm. Now, who in the world is creating or who out of this world, should we say better, is creating all this havoc, pouncing upon the, these nations world around. For instance, you've got these various hurricanes now that are hitting the Gulf Coast and in other places. For instance, here's a report. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season was one for the record books before it, it even eventually started. Researchers and meteorologists began calling for an above average season in a prediction from University College London on December 19, 2019, shortly after the end of the 2019 season. As forecasts continued through the winter and spring 2020, they all coalesced around predictions of 15 to 20 named storms and four major hurricanes. Two months into the season, NOAA released an updated 2020 Atlantic hurricane season outlook of August 6th. This updated outlook called for as many as 25 named storms and six major hurricanes, more than double than 1981 to 2010 historical averages. To date, October 13th, there have been 26 tropical, de they call them depressions, ho ho, of which 25 became tropical storms. Eight became hurricanes, including three major hurricanes. The most recent storm is Delta, the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet, which is used when the list of names designated for the season for the season is finished. Through the first part of 2020, the impact of the Atlantic hurricane season was minor, with less than one billion in total reported damage through July 27th. However, later storms beginning with Hurricane Isaias were more damaging, with current assessments coming to close to six billion, and Hurricane Laura at 10 to 12 billion. Damage from Sally was estimated to, to total 8 to 10 billion. Delta damage is not finalized as of yet, but is also likely to be substantial. As of October 13th, the National Hurricane Center is monitoring a tropical wave near the Leeward Islands. Who's doing all this damage? God Almighty. Why? Sin and wickedness. The more man's going to sin and the more wickedness, here come the storms. In all of this, there is not one word mentioned about God Almighty, and I don't mean any other God, but the God of the Bible, the King James Bible. You don't think God has a way of breaking these countries? Hurricane Isaias. Early damage assessment figures released by the Puerto Rican government estimate at least $47.5 million in losses. At least 13 people died as a result of Isaias II in each of the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, as well as one each in Connecticut, New Hampshire, New York, Maryland, and Delaware. There are no official reports on the number of injuries. Isaias is estimated to have caused over $4 billion in damage. With one storm, God is emptying the pocketbook of these countries. Here's another hurricane, Hurricane Hannah. Hannah strengthened to a hurricane shortly before making landfall along Padre Island off the coast of Texas on July 25th, causing 375 million bucks in damage. Three people in Mexico and one in Florida died as a result of Hannah. Officials downgraded Hannah to a tropical dep depression on July 26th. Hannah caused about 350 million in insured losses in Texas and 135 million in Mexico. And after report, after report, after report, after one hurricane, after a second hurricane, a third and fourth, and so on and so forth, at the end of this article, they have how to help. They've got two paragraphs here, 
and absolutely not one word mentioned about turning to the Lord Jesus Christ and begging for God's mercy and salvation by the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for wicked sinners. That's Job chapter 21 all over again. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Yeah, you'll see, friend, there ain't no profit when you don't pray to God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're not talking about taking some wafer, eating something to so-called receive salvation. We're not talking about salvation in some things. We're talking about a living, resurrected Savior that shed his own blood, pure, precious, powerful blood, to save your wicked soul so that you would not go to hell. And we're not done. We're just touching the tip of the iceberg. Now, how else does God judge? We're talking about modern-day judgments. Of course, they're not modern. They're as old, if we could say that, as sin, because that's what brings on God's judgment, sin. God judges, number three, by earthquakes. And boy, are they coming faster and more powerful, and they're coming in one after another. Earthquakes take place every day around the world. In 1994, the earthquake in Northridge, California, was about the magnitude of 6.7. Earthquakes this size occur about 20 times each year worldwide. Can you imagine that? It is considered moderate in size of over $20 billion in damage. The earthquake released the energy equivalent to almost 2 billion kilograms of explosives. The earthquake in 1994 in Northridge, California, released the energy equivalent to 44 billion pounds of explosives. That's about 100 times the amount of energy that was released by the atomic bomb that destroyed the city of Hiroshima during World War II. Now, one of the worst earthquakes took place in Chile in 2010 as the largest recorded earthquake, which is equivalent to over 44 trillion pounds of dynamite. Can you imagine that? And that's nothing for God to do. We are talking about earthquakes that are most certainly mentioned in the Bible, and this is one of God's ways of judging man and judging sin. Sumatra, in the year 2004, there was a very powerful earthquake which would be equivalent to 330 quadrillion pounds of explosives. In Chile, in 1960, there was a, an earthquake that would be, was equivalent to 123 quadrillion pounds of explosives. Now, when that Bible talks about the wrath to come, friend, when that Bible says the, a wrath is going to come, it's going to be sheeted hell on this earth. And it's not going to be a simple little old world war. That was a firecracker compared to what God is going to send. Now we read in Acts chapter 16, verses 25 and 26, when the apostle Paul and Silas and others were thrown in jail for preaching the gospel, we read this, Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Verse 27, And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Well, you know the story. What happened was that Philippian jailer said, What must I do to be saved? And Paul was ready to preach the gospel. He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, in the Holy Bible, the word earthquake is mentioned 19 times. As a matter of fact, when we're deal, dealing with these latter days, of course, here specifically, the Lord is dealing with uh, talking about the future events of the Great Tribulation. And we read in Luke chapter 21, verse 11, dealing with the tribulation. It says, and great earthquakes, plural, 
shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Of course, he's, that's the Lord Jesus Christ talking about the future events during the tribulation. But we're getting a foretaste of that right now, although the church is not going through the great tribulation. But we're seeing how things are becoming heated up, as they say, because we just read in one statistic there are at least 20 earthquakes a day that take place around the world. And we read about the future events here in Revelation 16, 18. We read, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And we read further, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations, plural. It doesn't say the nations except America. It says nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the, watch it, wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now, do you see how men react when God's trying to get their attention that they would repent and trust and believe in God, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Of course, during the Great Tribulation, they're going to not just have to believe in Jesus Christ. They're going to have to keep the commandments or keep from taking the mark of the beast. So, friend, if you aren't saved, there's only one thing we can offer you a free gift. That is receiving the person, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his precious blood on Calvary's tree, that you would come to him by faith and be born again. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ today and be saved. Amen. You've been listening to the Bible broadcast with Perry Demopoulos. We're glad that you joined with us for today's broadcast and hope the Lord has spoken to your heart. If you'd like to know more about the Christian walk, please let us know. If you've made the decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you may write to us at the following email address, pdkjv1611 at gmail.com. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you in His will. Ah! Uh-huh.